Hello everyone and welcome on this fine Wednesday evening. Or whenever you watch it. Or whenever you watch it, it might be Sunday morning. But welcome. Um, today we are going to be studying another of the disciples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Philip. Mm -hmm. Now we're not talking about Prince Philip. No. No. Or King Philip. No. We're talking about Philip the Apostle. Yes, that's the one. You and want to I, open with a prayer before I, we... I was going to okay. get into that. I'm sorry. I just want to thank everyone for their prayers. As you can tell, I'm feeling pretty good right now. Uh, so things are going to work out. It might take a while. Yes. And I may have rough patches and good yes. more good days, but a few bad days every once in a while. Yes. But anyway, enough of that. We're going to open up with a word of prayer. I haven't heard any prayer needs. Have you? Uh, just keep praying COVID for yeah, we the know a vaccines, couple people. for uh, our government, for just uh, cancer. There's several cancer reports, uh, different communities, okay. just all illnesses and grieving, grieving people. Yep. Okay. Well, if y'all will bow your heads and join me in prayer, pray for any needs that y'all have mm -hmm. during this time. Mm -hmm. Um our most gracious Heavenly Father, creator of all that we have seen today, all the beauty that surrounds us, all the the, the birds that sing, and, and all of the wonders that this world has, and even heaven, Lord, we you created all of that, Lord. And we thank you for it. We are humbled by that. And Lord, as you your humble children, we come to you and pray that you will touch any needs that are upon our hearts right now. Touch those with COVID. Touch those that have had COVID. Touch those with cancer, Alzheimer's, um, many, many ailments that, that just mm -hmm. seem to constantly plague us today, Lord. Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters and even those that are just suffering from it. Lord, we pray for those that have lost loved ones this past week. And it's, it's been tragic in, in several cases, Lord. Lord, I, I ask that you just be with the families. Comfort them at this time, Lord. Lord, and as we study your word today, Lord, we pray that you will just touch our, our hearts and open it up, Lord. And let us find kernels of gold that we can plant in our hearts mm -hmm. that will just blossom to so that others will see your love mm -hmm. lord encourage us and strengthen us in jesus name amen amen and uh, i will tell you i did the research and made our notes for this evening he hasn't gone over them yet so he may learn a few things uh as we go along things you didn't know all right That's uh, very quite possible <laughs> and i will say we don't know as much about philip as we do some of the others uh and he's often confused with somebody else but we'll get into all that was, was he is he is he the revelator you think about john I'm, i love messing with we, i did john last yes, week yes i know that's why yes. i said that you, okay that was a quiz for y'all too Philip was one of the four people that was, he was, Philip the Apostle was one of four people named Philip in the Bible. Mm -hmm. There were four. Four mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. He's often confused with Philip the Evangelist who plays a minor role in Acts. And we'll talk more about him. Okay. You just want me to keep reading? Yeah, yeah, you can keep going down and, and I'm going to look up scripture as we get to it. The other two Philips are both sons of King Herod the Great. And the Apostle Philip is only mentioned a handful of times in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. But he's mentioned seven times in the Gospels and once in the Acts, mm -hmm. in the Acts of the Apostles. Mm -hmm. Four of those mentions are just lists of the Apostles. Mm -hmm. His only significant me mentions come in the Gospel of John. His call is mentioned in John chapter 1, verse 43 through 51. Mm -hmm. And I'll go over part of that. Uh, this is, uh, Jesus calls, uh, Philip and Nathaniel. Uh, it says the next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. 
Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. And uh, uh, they talk for a second. They, they greet Jesus. And uh, Nathaniel says, how do you know me? Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. And uh, so Philip, this is one of the main things that he did was uh, he, brought Nathaniel. he brought Nathaniel to him. Okay. So that was when Nathaniel and Philip both were called. Well, Philip's first reaction after meeting Jesus was to go tell someone about him. He played an active role in leading another apostle to Jesus. That was Nathaniel. And he may have also been a disciple of John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. Jesus tested Philip during the feeding of the 5,000 in John 6, 1 through 15. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, if you remember, all the people are on the mountainside. They've been listening. They're hungry. And uh, let's see. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. And Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. So Philip is the one that Jesus questioned, and we know how that story ends up. But Jesus decided to test Philip. I don't know why. And uh, Philip is the one who was thinking practically. We don't have the money to do what needs to be done. He didn't think miraculously. But Philip became someone that evidently did a lot of work mm -hmm. as a, a missionary mm -hmm. because he was a, a missionary to Greece, Syria, and... Phrygia. Phrygia. Maybe. <laughs> He spent about three years living with Jesus and the other disciples, witnessing miracles, hearing Jesus' teaching. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be great, though, just to have three years mm -hmm. just to hear Jesus teach? He was there for the whole ministry. Yeah. Pretty much. And then go out and feel that spirit and feel that led to go out and just preach to anyone and yeah. lead people to Christ. Yeah. He comes from Beth Bethsaida. 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 A small that that seminary training paying off. <laughs> no, that's just pronunciation. <laughs> Bethsaida, a town by the Sea of Galilee. Mm -hmm. Simon Peter and Andrew were also from mm -hmm. this town. When some Greek men from Bethsaida went to see want to see Jesus, they come to Philip. Mm -hmm. Did I put the scripture there? John chapter twelve, verses twenty through thirty-six. Twelve. Perhaps they knew him. Maybe he spoke Greek better than the other disciples. Mm -hmm. uh, and that says, Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. And it, it could be because he spoke Greek. I think you just said this. Mm -hmm. Better than the others. Uh, the name Philip, even though he was an Israelite, the name Philip is a Greek name uh, that, what was it, means lover of horses. Right. Uh, so maybe they just thought the name, I don't know. We yeah, don't know why. Uh, Philip, that sounds like a Greek name. Let's go see him. It, yeah. That, so that's yeah. who they went to to say, we'd like to see Jesus. And Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went together to tell Jesus that the people were there. In John chapter 14, verses 5 through 14, Philip makes a statement. Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus responds. What was the scripture? Uh, chapter 14, verses 5 through 14. Okay. Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? 
The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. And uh, so because of, he goes, Jesus goes on to say quite a bit more, but because of uh, Philip's statement, show us the Father and that'll be enough. And you know, Jesus had to want to throttle him. I'm showing you the Father. I am him. I'm doing everything I can. Uh, so that was another little nugget from, from Philip. In Luke chapter 9 and Matthew chapter 8, when a disciple asked Jesus if he can bury his father before following him, it is believed that the unnamed disciple was Jesus. Uh, was Philip. Was Philip. I'm sorry. Sorry, folks. Yeah. But the, in that scripture, it does not say which disciple it was. But they do believe, and I don't know how they get this, but they believe that it's Philip. Clement of Alexandria, who lived in the 2nd and 3rd century, makes this claim. Okay. So one of the historians from just uh, after that time. In Acts chapter 6. Let, let me stop a minute. What what we do know is there there were a lot of writings that the historians made at that time that don't exist now. Uh, the, what Clement of Alexandria got his information from may not exist now, but we have his writings. Right. So, and, uh, and a lot of it can be proven or disproven. So, uh, and, and it's the same way we have, we haven't heard George Washington speak. Right. But we have his writings, That's and right. in 300 years from now, they may not have his writings anymore. Right. So that's, you know. so that's where we get some of this extra information that, and we try to say it may or may not be true. It's believed, but we don't have proof. Okay, in Acts 6, the apostles select seven men to be deacons and say it's because they need someone else to fulfill specific duties. Right. They didn't want to do what had to be done, the disciples right. themselves. So they chose seven men, and one of those men was named Philip, not Philip the apostle and the, the Philip they chose is often confused with Philip the apostle but it's he's known as Philip the evangelist that guy is. right right but it's not the same as Philip the apostle but the two people often get the two confused okay he preached in the gospel in Scythia this uh, Philip the apostle yeah Philip what we're the talking apostle. about preached yes huh which is central southern Russia mm-hmm Syria and modern day Turkey. Mm -hmm. Heropolis was a city near frozen waterfalls the size of Niagara. Mm -hmm. Not frozen but cold, but for, not frozen by cold, but for, cold, but formed by mineral waters that have flo mm -hmm. flowed over the side of a mountain for a thousand of years. The wick from all over the world was the wick? Sick. Sick. I've Typo. Yeah. Sick. I'm thinking, okay. The sick. That makes a little bit more. <laughs> the the sick from all over the world were brought to, uh, there were also heated pools. Yes, there was the freezing waterfall, but there were heated pools of water there. That's and from the earth. And people, yes, people from all over the world would bring their sick there. Uh, they believed that those waters could heal them. Uh, so they would come there. And this is one of the places where Philip the Apostle uh, is believed to have uh, to have preached to evangelize uh, to lead a lot lead a lot of people to Christ. I mean, I think that was Niagara Falls. No, it was the size of Niagara Falls. Okay, I need to find that place. I'll right, go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is a fourth century text called the Acts of Philip that has some true accounts mingled with legends, including a narrative involving a dragon yes this is not part of our bible exactly but but we do have some uh from this uh what was it philip acts of philip acts of philip uh parts of it may be true because it does talk about him going to the same places we do know he went to uh i don't know that he encountered a dragon there but it's interesting to read uh and this have, acts have you read of, it no, I have not. But you can look. You can find okay, it. Okay, I'm gonna it, find it. It's that. like a lot of the uh, those apocryphal books and other books that are not included. Um, this book also says that he converted a proconsul's wife, which angered a proconsul who had him and Bartholomew. 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 Say it again. Bartholomew. Crucified upside down while hanging there. 
Peter, I mean, Philip preached and the crowd was moved to release them. Again, this is in that book that's not in our Bible, but it's an interesting story. And it could be true. It could be. Because I've heard that before from other places. And he is a, a, a lot of times listed with Bartholomew. Bartholomew. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I almost want to say Bartkowski. No, it's not Steve Bartkowski. Bartholomew. I have, never mind. No. Not sure how he died since he's often confused with Philip the Evangelist. One record says he died of natural causes. Another says he was beheaded. Another says he was stoned to death. And another says he was crucified upside down. It is believed that Philip died around 80 years A.D., which is... 80 years after. Around about yeah. 80 years after Jesus died. In a letter to Pope Victor... Polycrate of Ephesus stated that Philip, one of the twelve apostles, was raised to rest at at Heropolis. Heropolis, mm -hmm. and intimates that Philip was martyred there. And he suggests that, that. Okay. and this Heropolis was the same place where the waterfall and the yeah. pools were. So that part we do believe is true that he was laid to rest there. Uh, we again we don't know for sure that he was martyred. Or if he died from just natural causes. natural causes and old age, we don't know. Uh, so we there's a lot we don't know about Philip. He's not one of the the ones who's uh, whatever he did that was written down. Most of what we know about him is in the book of John. He's often confused with someone else. But we do know that he was important to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus called him. He did some wonderful work. And uh, that's why we want mm -hmm. to remember him today. He preached to the Russians. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's a tough yeah. thing to preach to. Yes, it is. Well, I guess they always have me. I don't know. I have to go back and look up more about, uh, about him. Um, so I don't know. But that is what we do know about Philip. And... Uh, I would suggest these, these extra materials that we mentioned, go give them a read. You don't have to believe everything in them. I don't believe everything that they say, uh, except what is in the Bible, but they are interesting to read. I'm going to have to go read about his encounter with the dragon just, mm -hmm. just for my, uh, to give me something humorous to take a look at. But it may be true. What kind of dragon? Uh, um, I don't know. The Bible know. says Satan's a dragon. Well... But I don't think that's what they're talking. Made me want to look in it. Uh, fill up. Hiding. It dragon. Say... Now it's going to bring up Prince Philip from Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. That's not the one well, it that's is. Where they so got... anyway, okay. we'll try. Y'all Google of it. Philip. We'll... Acts of Philip. Acts of Philip. Okay. So after we get offline, we're going to go do some more research. Just uh, for, okay, still Sleeping Beauty. It's okay. not the Philip as in Sleeping Church Father, Beauty. the Acts of Philip, New Advent. <laughs> An unorthodox, episodic, apocryphal book of Acts. They are sent by Jesus. Now, this is not in the Bible. Uh, so, anyway, go look it up if you want to. Or, better yet, just grab the Bible. Look up Philip. See, get, yeah. uh, look up the ones we briefly touched on, the scriptures. Uh, see where you can find him in the book of John and uh, again in the book of Acts. And uh, I think that one's just a list of the disciples. Uh, but he was somebody important to Christ. And so we, we're going to remember him today. And I can't remember who will study next week, but we're going to keep going down the road. You'll, you'll find that some of these other disciples are going to have even less that we know about them than mm -hmm. we know about Philip. So, uh, and I don't know why that is. I don't know if those writings were lost, if uh, they never existed. I don't know. But it's one good reason, one good lesson to take from that is whatever your testimony is, share it. Write it down, video it, tell it to your children. Uh, keep sharing it so that what you do for Christ is remembered the way that what they did for Christ is remembered today. So that's that's a good extra, your extra nugget for the day. So uh, we love y'all. 
Hope you have a wonderful uh, week and uh, just keep reading your Bible and keep working for our beautiful Savior. Love y'all.